been having to, I've been having a strange issue with some random brown stuff, which I thought was brown jelly. You can see it here. And I'm like, there's always brown jelly. It's been over a week. Brown jelly would have decimated this coral, but it's gotta be, because now my other Garnipora has it too. You can see it right there. The only way I think that it spread from here to here was because of the clown hosting it. So I've dipped it, I've done everything possible. Now the fact that it's on here means nothing's really working. Desperate times call for desperate measures. We're gonna go over a coral bargain warehouse. We're gonna have Rod just zip, take that off and uh, frag that part, part out too. It sucks because it's a nice big Ganyapora and I love it, but I'd rather have half of it than none of it. The coral, it started with an encrusting Gani disappearing with brown jelly all over. I'm like, well, crap. Um, and then I see that this one has, you know, what looks to be the same, but uh, it, it didn't kill it right away, you know, which usually brown jelly will just wipe out an entire coral in a matter of days, for some people even hours. Uh, but it's been a week and it really hasn't gotten much bigger. But now the other Ganyapora, it is significantly bigger where it was never there before. I've done the dip. I actually did a Reefar eggs dip. Uh, I did a roadie dip. I even tried, not on the big Ani, but the green one. Uh, I also did a peroxide dip. And obviously that's not really doing it because there's brown in it again. It just doesn't want to seem to go away. I'm really worried about how much got shaken in the tank. So uh, I pray that nothing else is really going to catch it. So that kind of puts me in the last step, which is get rid of it. Uh, not the coral, but the bad section. So we're gonna go over to Coral Bargain Warehouse. And uh, when Rod is in, insanely busy, he said he'll go fire up the saw and uh, cut that off. So, you know, it's not a solution that I really want, but maybe he has an answer too. You know, Rod has been such an incredible resource to myself and other reefers. And when it comes to chemistry, man, this dude knows everything. So anyhow, um, that's where we're going now. Let's see what advice he has to give and hopefully this stops it right then and there. So stay tuned. per Rod's recommendation is we're gonna go ahead and clean these out one more time. All right, the thing's already kind of like all nasty and everything, so uh, we're gonna assume both of them are infected. So we're gonna clean them out, and then we're gonna put in another bucket of Malefix. Uh, once we do the Malefix, we're gonna put them in another tank. I'm gonna do a quarantine tank. I don't wanna put them back in this one, and then we're gonna keep an eye. If not, then we're gonna have to frag it, but that's gonna suck because this is right in the middle of it. So before we go and start cutting, let's see if we can fix the brown jelly. Well, I'm also gonna do some research on witch hazel. Apparently, putting some witch hazel in the tank really helps. So we'll see how well that works. Now we're gonna go ahead and just shake it up a little bit or at least, you know, rinse them out as best as possible. Yikes. Dang, that doesn't look good. But at least it's clean. There's no amount of jelly in there. At least it's clean, so there's not, you know, any leftover jelly. Now let's do the Malefix bath. Now the Malefix has to do eight milliliters per gallon, and this is according to Rod's specifications. So uh, we'll do right around 16 milliliters. And let's do a bath for a bit. The point of this is basically to just kind of clean and kill whatever bacteria are on there. Okay, good stuff. And you can tell he actually doesn't look like he's too annoyed because he's already coming out. 
So yay for that. Um, so now, the next thing we need to do is after this, we're gonna rinse it again. We're gonna take some more water and rinse it. And then we're gonna do new salt water and we're gonna use Biomedia from here. You'll see that in my sump, I always have Biomedia floating. So we're gonna use my little Penplex filter here, uh, which has almost a built-in power head. And we're gonna put that in most likely a 10 gallon tank. Well, let's see, I've got places to do a 10 gallon. And the question is, where am I gonna put it? So, really won't fit in here, that's for damn sure. I guess we could put it there. Mm, just filtering the water out of there kind of sucks, but I only have to do them five gallons, really. Um, so I think we can do that. So, yeah, let's go for it. Let's get that cleaned out. All right, I'm gonna go get my actual lights in here, but let's take a look and see what we've got going on. So you can see that I've cleaned that up there. That's been all cleaned. And now it's in uh, salt, you know, in salt water. I'm using my Penplex Cascade 300. How many power heads available? I couldn't find any locally right now. So Rock said actually this one should do just fine. There's the original media and I put some bio balls in there which the bacteria should grow in there fairly quickly. And yeah, we'll see how well this stays. Now the idea is to just basically yeah, I'll take a photo of it. So I'm gonna have it almost like right here. And every single day, we're just gonna compare it and hopefully it's not receding. Now if this recedes any further, then yeah, we're gonna get it cut. So we'll cut out the bad part, cut out the bad part, and uh, the end. Let's pray that it stays like that for a few days. Now let's get some lights in here. I've got my SB Reef, one of the bars, hung over it. Uh, we'll see what happens now. So will this stop brown jelly? Well, you know, there is no known cure for it. Doesn't mean that it doesn't stop, certain things won't stop it. Everybody has different experiences. Uh, he is very aggravated. He's ready to come out, so at least that's good. Um, but we'll see. You know, again, worst case, we're gonna have to frag this guy, and I really hope not, because I'm a huge fan of Gonoporas, love them. Uh, I actually got this one, can't remember the name of the company now, uh, but I got this one from the local frag show. And then this guy came from Worldwide Corals. So let's see what happens. And uh, let this be a lesson that if you have clownfish, uh, you know, honestly, they say they don't need an anemone, but in my opinion, get one. Maybe the first thing you should put in your tank is an anemone. So that we don't have to worry about them, you know, moving around. You can see where it gets situated. But I have mine in a nice little container and he's staying still. I, I just added him a couple weeks ago. But the reason I say that is because after a while, you know, when my clowns are tank raised apparently, and even then instincts still kick in. And he was hosting this one, and they went over to host this one, and then he hosted this one again. So somewhere along the lines, the clown decided to, or the clown accidentally spread the brown jelly disease. Now, maybe it didn't come from either ones. Maybe this came from the other coral that I got, the encrusting Ganyapora, the one that got wiped out almost instantly. Maybe the clown brushed by it and then it spread to these guys. I don't know. You know, and I say it's the clown because none of the other fish really go near them. They are just absolutely scared, except for my Midas Plenty. But where you, you can see that there, the big, you know, empty mark. The whole reason I saw it is because that was where the clown kept rubbing up against while he was sleeping. So, or she rather. So, hope that helps uh, some of you guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and tune in. And let's see what happens if this works or if we gotta frag it off. Thanks for watching.